What's up, Res Life students? It's Blake from Res Life West, and we are continuing our new series where we are looking at the book of James and reading through the entire thing, chapter by chapter. This month, we're encouraging you to read the entire book of James. But don't worry, it's not that difficult. It's only five chapters long, and you could probably read it in 20 to 30 minutes if you actually tried. To recap, the book of James, it's a book near the end of the New Testament, and it's believed to be written by a man named James, who is believed to be the brother of Jesus. And the overall picture of James is about a wholehearted devotion to Jesus. Or rephrase, a sincere, complete, or enthusiastic devotion to Jesus. So I wanna start off with a question for you today. Have you ever heard the phrase, walk the walk, or talk the talk, or practice what you preach? These are phrases we've heard before, maybe at times we really didn't wanna hear them, but they are encouraging us to live out what we are saying or doing. For example, if I say I wanna be a good and safe driver, but actually speed or don't use my blinker, I'm not talking the talk. I'm not doing what it is I'm saying I would do. Here's another example. If I say we should be kind to our siblings, but if I'm not actually kind to my siblings, I'm not practicing what I'm preaching or doing what I'm telling you to do. Phrases like this aren't meant to shame us but they are meant to keep us and our faith and ourselves in check. And this idea isn't anything new. It's actually something that comes up in scripture. And today we're looking at that in James 2, verses 14 through 17. And it talks about this idea on how it connects to our faith. So read along with me. My brothers and sisters, what good is it if people say they have faith but do nothing to show it? Claiming to have faith can't save anyone, can it? Imagine a brother or sister is naked and never has enough food to eat. What if one of you said, go in peace, stay warm, and have a nice meal? What good is it if you don't actually give them what their body needs? In the same way, faith is dead when it doesn't result in faithful activity. So here we have an invitation from James to tell us to walk the walk. What he is saying is that if one has faith, then they should do things with it. A faith that is only spoken about but not acted on doesn't make something spiritually alive. That phrase, spiritually alive, that means a person who is trying to do the faith things, you know, like worship and prayer and studying and serving and giving while trying to model Jesus' example to others. It excites them. Jesus gives us an example about someone that has no clothes or food. He says, if you went up to that person and said, stay warm, but actually walked away, your faith isn't authentically being lived out. You're not talking the talk. Going that extra step, talking the talk, would mean bringing clothes to that person or food to that person or caring for them better. And we get that example from Jesus. This passage shares that we need to walk the walk and talk the talk when it comes to our faith. We've already mentioned that the book of James is about a wholehearted devotion to Jesus. And what we saw from Jesus' example is that he often went the extra step and was always practicing what he was preaching. And Jesus did this in so many different ways. He fed people, he prayed with people, he healed people. You could say Jesus loves each of his neighbors really, really well. Now I've heard people tell me Jesus did so many good things. I don't know if I could do that. And it's true, Jesus was special. You can never be Jesus, like Jesus is Jesus, but, but you can be like Jesus. And that is what we are called to be. We're called to be like Jesus, and called to live like Jesus. I think it's way easier to let Jesus do the Jesus part, but to live our lives like Jesus. So how do we do that as middle school and high school students and live out our faith and walk the walk like Jesus every single day? You know, one way we talk about a lot at church and at youth group is serving others. Now, serving others is important, and this is such a clear way to put our faith into action. 
This month, we have a very practical way and opportunity to serve others. It's coming up on Martin Luther King Day on January 17th. At Martin Luther King Day, we have the chance to serve our city and our community in a really profound way. Check out how some of our students served last year. I'm here because it's Martin Luther King Day and for Res Life we decided that instead of having a day off we would have a day of helping others and it's super fun to get to spend time with my fellow compromands. It's just really fun to be able to help other people. This is a great opportunity to be together with a little bit of action in faith you can do miracles so we are trying to do miracles today. Be like Martin Luther King, he was a great person. It's fun to play outside because it's better than you see on video games. It's so much more than what you see on the screen. We are packing 45,000 meals today that will go overseas to feed folks who are hungry. I serve because it's a great way to get back to the community. There are people less fortunate than us and it's good to help them and provide for them. Everyone should serve because they could help people that are less fortunate and get them the meals that they deserve, just like we do. And everyone deserves to have meals and no one should go to bed hungry. So we are here because we wanted to help pack some meals for hungry people. We talked to our kids about being hungry and what it's like to be hungry, so we wanted to help add to the help for that. This is something that we love to do, to be able to help the community. It's an amazing day helping other people in need that would like to have a good meal. And the people all across this nation are out serving, embracing diversity and helping others. And we want these kids to get that kind of experience and, and to start serving now. These are students putting their faith into action and serving in their community. And why do we do it on January 17th? It's because we were reminded of the example of Martin Luther King Jr. Martin Luther King Jr. was a pastor who wanted to live like Jesus in a time where there was intense racial tension. And there is still racial tension today in our country. But Martin Luther King Jr. tried to live like Jesus and advocated for justice and equality for all human beings. He put his faith into action. He did his best to walk the walk and to practice what he was preaching, like the Bible talks about. And he served this country and this world in a powerful way. We serve on Martin Luther King Day because we are reminded of his example and we desire to live out that example to Christians all around the world. Think for a second about other works that go along with your faith. You know, like reading the Bible, like worship, like praying. Have you ever heard of confirmation? Maybe you've heard of it. Maybe you're in it right now. Maybe you'll do it in a few years. Maybe you did it a few years ago. Confirmation is something we offer here at Res Life for current 8th to 12th grade students. It's a chance to explore your faith, the Bible, and Methodism on a deeper level. And at the end of confirmation, students have the chance to publicly profess their faith in front of their family, their friends, and their church. It's a really cool thing. But confirmation is all about trying to put their faith into works while looking at the Bible, while studying, while praying, while worshiping together. Students and leaders do that all together. It's a really powerful experience. They are trying to live out their faith. Hey, we do this at youth group too, every single week and on church on Sunday mornings and on our services. It's in these moments where we try to walk the walk and talk the talk and explore how our faith is lived out that we become more spiritually alive. This wholehearted devotion to Jesus that James talks about, it's about putting our faith into action. Students, what might this look like for you? How can you live out your faith in a real way to those around you right now? There are some practical examples like serving at Martin Luther King Day coming up, or maybe signing up for confirmation next year. But there are also moments at school or at home or, or everywhere else that we can live out our faith and talk the talk and walk the walk like Jesus encourages us to do. So let's embrace that opportunity so we can share with others how Jesus is already impacting the world. <laughs>